Hey everybody. So a lot of times when you see a beautiful woman who has been with, you know, successful men, or you see lovely couples who for some reason weren't able to work it out, you know, there's always a question of why, what happened? If she's so beautiful, if she's so attractive, is she so successful? What could have happened with their marriage? She seems like she has it all. Or if he's this or he's that, what could have happened? It seems like they have it all. And this is the case for the co-parenting with the Spurlings, right? You have a very successful couple who on paper, they're both attractive, they're both successful, they look like they could be a beautiful black couple, they met in college from my understanding, and on paper it seems like it would be a match made in heaven. But what happened that caused things not to work out? I think some of the scenes I'm about to show you really give some insight into the different tensions that were possibly going on in the relationship and perhaps why ultimately the relationship dissolved. And now I will say this, I obviously am a supporter of marriage. I'm married and I, you know, believe in covenant. I don't promote divorce. That is not what I'm here to do. But I do, however, want to highlight potential different challenges that can arise and different things we as women in particular can do that might keep relationships from thriving the way that we want them to thrive. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And, um, you have, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and let's get into it. So in this particular scene, we see Mr. Dennis Sperling telling his now ex-wife, um, who they've been divorced for years now, he is now expecting a child with another woman with his girlfriend. Uh-huh. It's Kenya, okay? And I'll be... <clears throat> hey, what's up, Steph? Hold, hold on. One moment. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you know, uh... How you doing? <laughs> I'm fine. You told me you wanted to talk, so I came out to see what's up. You, you know, say that something. serious face like I mean, nobody... cause you you you've been you've been telling me you, you've been having something you want to talk to me about. Every time you say you've been having some issues and you wanted to meet up and chat about it, so I'm right here. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't have any issues. Got I just it. wanted to let you know that okay. um, my ex girlfriend is pregnant, and so. When Dennis told me that um, he was having a new kid, honestly, I didn't know what to feel. I talked to Stephanie today, and I think she took the news as well as can be expected. It's probably like a shot in the stomach. I wanted to say it wasn't a punch in the gut. It was just a shock because um, I knew it would affect my kids. Uh, she's a few months along now and um, I'm excited about it. You told me that you guys wanted to have a baby. That's yeah. good. She's excited too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what it's like being pregnant, you know? So uh, I'm just trying to figure out what the circumstances are going to be, where we're going to have like a baby. Like you guys get married? Well. You say circumstances, like, I, I don't, what circumstances? Look, 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 just, just don't worry about that. And then when he didn't want to talk about it, that really, really almost set me off. No, Here's the only question. circumstances that I'm concerned with. Yeah. I just want to make sure that the message of you and your ex having the baby is delivered to the boys by you. You know, the kids Why? that... Why wouldn't it be? Well, I just want to make sure because Monday through Friday, they come, they're riding with mommy, they're asking mommy the questions, right, and look, I just want look, to make okay, sure. Okay, I hear you. So notice the tension right notice the anxiety she's not saying it but you could see that she is clearly very agitated she's probably very flustered you know she wants to feel composed um there's probably an aspect of her that doesn't even fully understand her emotions but you can tell she's getting incredibly anxious and notice how and notice how when the anxiety ran the first thing that she tried to do is take control, right? She started trying to get more information, dig at him a little bit and, and try to force things out of him. And you could see how he immediately, he immediately kind of shut down because that approach probably felt very off-putting. Again, a very small interaction, very quick interaction, but you could see quickly how quickly those walls went up. I'm gonna go ahead and go now. The boys are there. Y'all have a great day. But you wanted Hasta to la talk. Vista. Bye, baby. Okay? You don't wanna talk. I talked to you. I told you what I had to say. Again, I have to hold my posture and my and keep composed. We were in public. My sons are there. I see you later. You look great. Yep. Bye, baby. See you. One thing I can just say in general, right? And look at talk, speaking to myself as women, again, when you are in a relationship, especially with a man who is strong, because this, think about it. Most women out there, we don't want to be with like weak minded men. A lot of us, we want to be with strong men who can make decisions, who are successful, who are thought leaders, who are attracted to that. But the thing about it is if you're attracted to that, then we have to understand that there's a, there's a particular way to approach them. And when you 
put when you try to push or force those kind of men it never really goes well it never goes well it usually always blows up in your face and there's certain kind of men they feel like they're forced they'll go the opposite if you say go left they'll go right just to spite you like there's some men who are like that but just what i'm saying is trying to force the issue never really 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 goes right so already in that quick interaction i'm seeing how okay this is a tendency that she had if she when she started getting anxious or afraid she started trying to gain control Whew, that could be a huge problem for a strong man who wants to feel respected and ultimately wants to feel like he has the space to lead so let's continue this is the big time. I have not told Toya. Toya is my back door. She's my LSBFF. When she comes and when I tell her, one, I know she's going to kill me because it's been weeks. But I know when I tell her, she's going to realize why I've been distant. You can tell a lot about a person based upon the friends that they're around. And we see that she's surrounded by a lot of single women. She's surrounded by a lot of women who are probably, you know, in similar co-parenting situations or just single mothers themselves. Women who are perhaps successful without men in their lives or essentially trying to navigate complicated scenarios. And so again, you can get, a, you can understand a lot about a woman by who is she surrounded by. You know, it's, you know, I call you when I need to, we have fun, but yeah, it's, I've yeah. been dealing with something that I, I really, I don't even know why I'm dealing with it the way mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. But Dennis recently told me that his ex is having a baby. Wait. When I told my friend LaToya, I, I could tell instantly how she took it. Her eyeballs pierced through my skin. She realized I had been holding something from her. Oh, but listen, listen, because you know how I am. I try to, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why I have these, um, these feel. I'm trying so to. So how do you feel about it? Because he, even though. You know, I, I guess I'm a little embarrassed because mm -hmm. after the divorce, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're going through a divorce, there's so many people coming at you. You feel embarrassed because it, you feel and it's okay to feel that way. I feel like I feel like we fixed the negative image of divorce around us and now yes. I have this element. I know, you know, she has had maybe some parallel situations. So I do know that she is a person that I can talk to about this. You as we're talking through this, I keep hearing everybody else and you have to take control. Okay. And say this is what Stephanie is going to do. Cuz you know, I went through that with mm -hmm. same scenario, right? So the one thing that I could tell you to do is you have to be in control. I know because of her experiences with similar situations, she won't leave me wrong. And if you feel like talking to Dennis, say, look, this is the deal. This is how I feel. And don't hold back on your feelings and be honest. I know you're right. I, you, I'm going to talk to Dennis about it. The conversation is going to happen because it affects our family. And I'm not taking it. You have to the end of the week. It's, it's going to happen. <laughs> It's gonna happen. I love you. Bro. I know. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Personally, when I'm looking for relationship advice or anything to do with family, I tend to like to look at people who are f far beyond me. <laughs> right? I don't want to turn to a peer. I don't want to turn to a sister or auntie. I mean, they there's value to talk to them in certain scenarios, but ideally, I want to turn to somebody who has like, who is decades ahead of me in some particular scenario and has a proven track record of success, right? They have healthy children who themselves are married or, um, you know, they've been married decades and have gone through different seasons. These are the people, me personally, these are the people that I like to take relationship advice from because I recognize that when I'm taking relationship advice from my peers, they're more likely to just give me advice that's going to either keep me in my, in my current scenario or just help me reproduce the situations that they have. And if I'm not happy with the situation that they have, then I'm like, I'm better off following the advice of people who have the lifestyle that I want. So that is just my particular rule of thumb, but I always find it interesting when I see women who turn to their peers for advice and don't necessarily f seek the help of like elders, right? Or people who are far beyond them who can give them like sage wisdom. And that's the one thing that I stood out about this because as you can see, it sounds like this woman essentially gave her advice to kind of reinforce what she probably already wanted to do. She told her, take control. She told her, you got to take control of the situation. And, and you notice in the scene before, she was already trying to take control of the situation. So it was interesting how she 
basically went to a person who reinforced the very things that she probably was already doing to begin with. And I think that can be the challenge when we start to turn to our peers instead of going to like elders or people who can see things from a different perspective. So, you know, that's just something that I noticed in this scene. Let's continue. My plan was to go to the office because we were going to have the discussion. I wanted to know how we would move forward and I wasn't going to take no for an answer. Well, how you doing? I, was, I had to wait in the office. And... I was going to come out there and get you. I had some phone calls to take. You know, I was coming out there in a minute. I was just trying to wrap some stuff up so I can you can have my the, complete. The other day you kind of rushed off undivided attention. You told me that you wanted to talk. You want to have this conversation where my office, we got office full of staff out there. We, you want to have this conversation right now? It's time to talk. It is time for us to meet and hash out a plan. Yeah, so Stephanie came to visit me in my office unannounced, but that's okay because, you know, she's the mother of my children and my ex-wife, and I guess she has that privilege. Although I wouldn't come pop up at her job like that, but that's okay because, like I said, she's my ex-wife and the mother of my children, so. Is she ready for what this role requires? Or have you guys had those discussions? Are you guys ready? Stephanie, why are we having this conversation? Because when I decided to have a baby, it was with a plan and with a right, structure. Okay, so have you right, guys okay. said that what focus? What is this really about, Steph? That is what it's what, No, no, what is this about? really about? Because even when you and I had, a, had Dennis, our kids. Yeah, it wasn't, it, we didn't go into this much detail, it kind of just happened and we, we dealt with it. We made sure that we had a sound relationship before we delivered pregnancy. Well, that's not and what everybody does. So. I understand that. Okay. And so here's what I want to know. And with, in moving forward, okay. just for the, the, just in the best interest of our two sons mm -hmm. and the baby that is on the way, I think that those are some strong and wonderful conversations Why, know, that you guys oh, okay, can have. Okay. Just to keep, we have a great structure. I mean, it's a baby. What are we gonna do about it? This is what you're gonna, not gonna make it come? Just cause she's uncomfortable. We could talk about it. All she wants to talk about it, but it's coming. You stay. You don't wanna take them to New Orleans all the time. Yeah. And missing yeah. days from school. Uh, to go to Mardi Gras. That's one holiday a and year. And missing karate classes on Saturdays because you want to go one see your holiday mama. A year, but there You're trying to keep up ties out there, going to send your second Dennis, and third, fourth baby this, mama's second of this baby is shower. Said to offend you. I'm not trying to offend All you, but you're coming, you're busting my office. Highlight. I needed to know the details. I needed to know how would this affect the boys. If that wasn't the time, I'm going to make time. All right, so. so mm -hmm. All I suggest is that we set a plan and that it's structured for mm -hmm. your whole family now. Thank you, Professor. I appreciate you lecturing me on how I should run my life. After talking to Dennis, we did, uh, he did get some things out. You know, he, he expressed to me that he does not know. I think that Stephanie probably talked to her friend, her mama, her sister, and anybody else who would listen and she gave me their feedback, and so she brought that along with her, her own take on it. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. The amount of disrespect, it is off the charts. Like, there's just so much wrong here. So again, you start off by going into a man's job unannounced, like it's an emergency. Okay, like I get it. In a case of emergency, you want to be able to have access. But to me, that already kind of shows a level of disrespect for his time. Because it's like, you really couldn't schedule another time when he's not working to do this or schedule a time that's, you know, when he's not in between calls or whatever. But anyways, so you barge into a man's job, right? You interrupt his time. You're not showing respect for what he's doing. You're not showing respect for his job. You interrupt his time. You don't even let him come in and get you. Then you sit down and you force a conversation. Like, it's like she's interrogating him. It's literally like she's interrogating him. And she's like, we're going to, you know, in the video, she's like, we're going to have the conversation. We're going to have it today. And again, trying to force, trying to control the issue. And I alluded to this, you know, earlier on in the scene, right? Where she got anxious and she got afraid and fearful. And when that happened, she tried to take control. And I'm like, that is kryptonite for a man like that. I mean, you're literally trying to interrogate a man who fights for a living. Like this is a man who literally interrogates people professionally. So you're literally now trying to sit down with a professional and 
beat him at his own game like that just <laughs> it's literally like a disaster so this whole scene to me was just so cringe and you obviously see that he felt incredibly disrespected it's like wow like you don't even respect my time you just barge into my job like i have calls like you're forcing an issue and then you just come into my job unannounced and then force me to have a conversation i'm not ready to have um in a way that's incredibly demeaning like it's just like there's just so much wrong in this scenario but the crazy thing to me about it is i don't it doesn't seem to me <laughs> like this registered to her as disrespectful I think maybe in her mind, I mean, I'm just making assumptions, I don't fully know, but it, it seems as if she felt that this was justified because she needed to have an answer and she needed to have a plan. Ultimately, she needed to feel in control of a situation that she doesn't really have control over. He doesn't even fully have control over it. This is why he said, I don't know, I don't have a plan. So again, I think some really good lessons here about respect, um, about conflict management and then ultimately about how do we handle our fear there's some women when they get afraid they want to control they want to start controlling people places and things that can be a nightmare because ultimately it's an illusion we can have plans we can create plans to try to to try to feel in control of our life and to try to mitigate fear but ultimately there's so many things that are outside of our control and outside of our abilities to maintain but when we try to put those unrealistic standards and those expectations on other people around us, it can just be like a real headache. And again, especially if you're working with like a strong-minded man, but in general, it's like kryptonite. So again, I think this scene is really impactful because it just highlights so much about conflict management gone wrong, truthfully. <laughs> and here's the thing that I know about certain, I don't wanna say this is all men, but here's the thing that I've observed about strong-minded men. You irritate them, especially if you irritate somebody who is a fighter, they may try to get you back. They might try to um, be a little petty <laughs> or they may, they may try to poke you, even if they're not gonna try to be completely obvious with it. They may hold that, they may hold that and say, okay, and then just wait for a time to just strike. And just the energy that he's giving, you know, the energy that he gave when I saw that, I was like, mm, this seems like, this seems like this is going to retaliate. Those are just my initial thoughts. Okay, let's continue. Gentlemen, what's up, boys? Good. Good, good. I see you. Hi, Daddy. Hey, hey, what's up? I see you showed Mommy where Daddy's secret mm -hmm. key is, how to get in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I come downstairs and Stephanie's in there cooking something or doing whatever she's doing and you know we don't have a lot of barriers you know and there probably should be more that's probably why i don't have a new girlfriend i can't keep one because she keeps running them off so this morning i went to the house to make sure the boys were prepared because nanny becky's coming to pick them up to bring them to the zoo okay i see you boys are eating uh mommy's oatmeal how about this? How about we get one of these snappy tarts in there on you, huh? Pass that around, son. Pass that around. All right, that's cool. So you it gets cringier. Um, so you just wake up and there's grown adults in your house, like your ex is in your house. It's kind of weird. I mean, unless they already have a policy or that's okay, which it doesn't sound like they do, that's a bit intrusive. Um, boundaries seem to be a little blurred there. And if this is coming after a scenario where he already felt disrespected it just sounds like a recipe for a altercation steph what's hey, up look at you all right how's it going i'm good i'm good y'all dressed up got your pearls on yes i see you have your gallon of water yeah my new trainer says i need to drink some water Get my you. trainer says the same thing that's because we have the same trainer mm -hmm. anthony my trainer yeah is your trainer that's my trainer now Wow. Retaliation with with the whole trainer thing. He's acting like that wasn't on purpose, but that was definitely on purpose. You could just tell like that. He, just my, my gut reaction was that like, oh yeah, he is definitely trying to get her back. Maybe trying to make her see how it feels to be disrespected or to have your personal space be intruded on because that's how he's felt with the job, with him, her barging into his uh, work without, you know, a notice him her coming into his house lack of boundaries so it seems like he is now trying to give her 
a taste of her own medicine. I mean, that's just my, that was just my gut reaction when I saw that. Wow. I'm well, excited I about hope, it. Okay. Six pack, it'll be rolling. I'll see you. I just hope Antonique can keep my schedule because, you know, I, I, I'm pretty busy and I would hate to lose my days, but I'm happy for you. She's great. I think you'll be okay. <laughs> she has plenty of people that she services and you're one of them and I am also one of them. You know, the fact that he's called my trainer to be his trainer, I don't, I don't know if that's a compliment or if it's, for immediately I felt like it was invasive. Now this scene was really interesting because again, we see her talking about Dennis barging into her life and not respecting her boundaries. And this is after having seen a series of events where boundaries were clearly crossed and disrespected prior to that point. So now you basically have the dynamic of a relationship where there's a lack of boundaries, there's a lack of respect, there's a lack of honoring one another to a certain extent. And then again, that could create tension. So it just kind of seems like it creates a snowball effect. That was another episode of Co-Parenting with the Sperlings. Definitely be sure to check it out. Binge watch many of the episodes. Um, and yeah, definitely be sure to show some love and let me know what you think of everything up to this point. Again, the purpose of these reviews, it is really not to try to point the finger at one over the other. You know, I think I have to applaud truly both of them for being willing to put their, their life on display for people to see because they already knew that they were going to be opening themselves up to a level of public criticism. But this really provides us an opportunity to have really great discussions, to look at teachable moments, and ultimately to talk about ways that you know, we, we are, ourselves can maybe help improve or avoid some of the different pitfalls that they experienced on their way of trying to navigate the relationship. Shout out to both of them for being willing to open up their, their lives in that regard. Be sure to leave your comments down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for listening if you've gotten this far and we'll talk later. Okay, bye.